Well, if you would um, take your Bibles today, if you have them, or your devices, and turn to um, 1 John chapter 3, <clears throat> and closer to the back of your Bible, 1 John chapter 3, and I like to read verse 14. I'll give you a few seconds to turn there. Notice what the sermon title is from the bottom up. It's not bottoms up, okay? It's from the <laughs> bottoms up, okay? So don't, don't be saying that the preacher is talking about that, but, but that's from the bottom up, okay? In um, 1 um, John chapter 3, verse 14, let's look at this as I read this. Um, it says here in Scripture, We know that we have passed from death to life because we love the brethren. He who does not love his brethren abides in death. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Fathers, we come before you today. Allow us to know that we have passed from death to life because we love our brethren, but also all people. We know that your word says that God is love. And Father, let us experience that in such a real way that we have never done that before, Lord. Let us know that, that you love us with an unconditional love, but you want us to love those around us and also forgive those around us too, Father. Answer questions individually and corporately. Allow us to be more like you as we leave here today, Father, but above all else, lead us by your spirit. Draw us close to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, um, as I was studying this this week and also this morning, if we really knew the love of God in our lives, you know what that would be like in our lives. We would be like sugar in hot water. We would just dissolve. If we knew his love that he had for us individually and corporately, um, we would just dissolve in his love. And I know that's a hard thing to understand sometimes, but I, I want to share a couple of scriptures before I get into this main scripture. In, in Psalms 41, verse 1 says, Blessed, happy, fortune to be envied. And this is the Amplified Bible. Blessed, fortunate to be envied is he who considers the weak and the poor. The Lord will deliver him in the time of evil and in trouble. If we act upon people in time of trouble and need, God takes note of that. And, and hopefully we do that with love, according to scripture. Matthew chapter 24, verse 12 says, and because a lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. And this is a sign Jesus talks about in Matthew 24 in the last days, the love of many will grow cold. And I'm convinced we've been in the last days for quite a while. I'm not setting any time dates or any coming of Christ, but um, when, when people laugh, when people get hurt, the love of many grow cold. Did you know that? I, I can't believe the videos that people try to post and keep of people being hurt and laugh about it. The love of many has grown cold. And, and we know that when the love of many grows cold, sin starts to abound. But we know that grace abounds more, says scripturally. But also, if you look at the signs of just how much the love of many have grown cold and how, how the end times are going to be here, um, look at the scriptures, Matthew chapter 24, the book of Daniel, the book of Ezekiel, um, the book of Revelation. Um, th there's other books, the book of Joel. And then also, I, I just want you to look at this from the, the natural, the flesh point of your life, that we are living in end times because it says that um, deception will be abroad. Um, there'll be much deception. And, and I've shared this with a few people in my life close, and they laugh about this, but here is a deception that the Lord is coming back. This is just my, my view. You can take it for what it's worth. Because of all the deception and the lies going on, never in my life would I thought that they would try to sell a sports car having four doors. Have you ever thought about that? You ever seen a four-door Corvette? I haven't. Have you seen a, a four-door Challenger? I haven't. But, but the world tries to sell you a, a sports car with four doors. And I'm going, my land, what, what is happening to society? They're buying into that lie. And then also, have you seen the new Mustangs? Um, Ford, I don't know what you're thinking about. Uh, that is a sports car. I, I don't know. Kind of hard to beat a 1964 and a half Mustang or 65. Um, I, I just throw that because of deception. 
We start to believe the lie in the world that we live in. Now, um, let, let's go on here in scripture because um, in science class, remember when we finally got to do some hands-on stuff in the lab and, and remember um, if one of the first ones you ever did was, is it an ass, uh, acid or a base? Remember that, an acid or a base? And you had this litmus paper and, and you got real excited because you could tell what it was. But according to scripture, we can tell if we have passed from death to life. Did you know that? If you don't know if you're really saved, look at these verses here in scripture. Because um, if you have love one for another, the brethren. That's what it says in scripture. Now, in um, 1 John 3, 14, it says, we know. Notice those two words, we know. He's talking to us as a group. That we have passed from death to life because, because of we love the brethren. Now, if you are having a hard time in your life not loving somebody, I encourage you to get right with God through Jesus Christ. Because it says we love the brethren and he who does not love his brethren abides in death. Um, people, I, I don't want to live in death. I know you don't want to live in death either. And this is a hard sermon because... You know, God is love. Jesus Christ loves us. He laid down his life for us. But, you know, if we harbor any um, hatred in our heart, and the opposite of love is hate, if you look at this in Scripture. In 1 John three fifteen, the second verse I want you to look at, whoever hates his brother, and people, these are not my words. These are the words of God. Whoever hates his brother is a murderer. People... Just think how many people we have made killed in our life, hating people. We are a murderer, it says in scripture. And then it says, and listen, it gets so personal, and you know. First scripture, we know. Second scripture says, you know. You know that no murderer has eternal life abiding or abiding in him. Um, think about those words. That those are scriptures that you can line your heart up with. What does scripture says? Test things. Scripture says um, also to judge ourselves. Remember, there's a scripture people read before communion. Judge yourself. That's what it says in scripture. And scripture says to judge ourselves. And if we don't judge ourselves and we live in hate and we can't love people, we abide in death. And, and God is not about death. He's the God of the living. That's what it says in scripture. Now, if you hate your brother, you are a murderer. And someone said, I never kill anybody, Troy. I, I've had people try to classify their sins before me, and, and people don't do that. I've done that in my life, and I know it's not right. Don't do that. Because God's word says, if you know that no murderer has eternal life or abiding in them. And this is heavy stuff, and this is so true. This is so true because we live in a world where everybody hates everybody because they can justify it and society has a good place for them to do that. I don't read anywhere in scripture it says that. And if we knew the true love of God through Jesus Christ, if we could comprehend that and know that, you would hate nobody. I'll guarantee that. You would hate nobody, whatever they've done to your life. You may not like it, but you would never hate them. Never hate them, according to scripture. Because John chapter 10, verse 10 says, the thief comes not except to steal and to kill and destroy. And Jesus says, I have come that they may have life and they may have it more abundantly. People, we need some life and more abundantly life in our life because we should know as Christians what Satan is doing to us. The word of God tells us, Jesus tells us, and in John chapter 13, verse 34, John chapter 13, verse 34, it says, a new commandment I give you. This is Jesus Christ talking. A new commandment I give you that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. Verse 35 of John chapter 13. By this all will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. People, you can still be a disciple of Jesus today. Somebody told me once, all disciples died. I said, yes, I know that. But have you read John chapter 13? That's what it says in scripture. 
Now, the original 12 died, I understand that, but we can still be one of his disciples. Now, I want to tell you a story. This happened in, in the first church, well, actually the second church I was at. First church, I was a youth minister. Second church, well, I was a minister. And it's kind of funny when people ask you, so are you, are you the, uh, the lead minister? The, I used to say, I'm the only minister, so besides the people. Very small church. Anyway, I went to visit this lady. She, she was homebound. I'm going to tell you, it's a lady. And um, I, I visited her many times. I got to know her likes, her dislikes. And one day, we were just talking about the community and this community was very small, and, and I just mentioned this one name. It was a man's name. And all of a sudden, her, her countenance, her appearance changed, and her eyes changed too. I mean, everything about this lady changed. And she has, this is what she said, I hate that man. And I thought, yeah, you do hate that man, because everything about you changed. Everything about her changed. And she said, I hate that man. I can't forgive him for what he did. And I thought, and, and I did say once, I said, Jesus forgave us for what we did. Um, you, know, you know, it's funny that scripture says, it's not funny, but it's funny to us sometimes, that we can remember the bad things that we do. Um, scripture says that Satan is the accuser of the brethren. He'll bring those things up you did. But we also have to know that God forgave us of all those bad things if we ask it in the name of Jesus. And you know what it says in Scripture? He remembers them no more. He remembers them no more. But in Galatians chapter 5, verse 14 says, for all the law is fulfilled in one word. All the law is fulfilled in one word. Even in this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love your neighbor as yourself. Do you know if you were in Christ Jesus... You have fulfilled the law. Did you know that? He has fulfilled the law. He said, I didn't come to destroy the law. I've come to fulfill the law. And if you love one another, you have fulfilled the law because Jesus did that for you. Did you know that? You know what? People are trying to keep the commandments. You can't do it, but Jesus did it. And if you're in Jesus, he's done that for you. But if you love one another. But in verse 13 says, in Galatians chapter 5, if you, brethren, having been called to liberty, only to use liberty as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love we serve one another. Love covers them all to the sin. Through love we serve one another. And people say, Troy, what are you talking about? Love all the time. Remember the first time that you experienced love in your life? I, I mean true love. Maybe like when your mom and your dad told you that they loved you. Maybe like when they took care of you, uh, they did things for you, they stayed up with you, they, they, they went with you, they took you to the hospital. I mean, the list goes on. That was love, love in action. You know, Jesus talks about um, being compelled or having compassion. That's, that's love in action, if you look at that in Scripture. Now, in Romans chapter 13, this is what it says. Um, verses 8 through 13. And it talks about loving your neighbor. And, and it's so easy to talk about, you know, I love people. And this is what this lady was talking about right before she told me she hated somebody. She said, I love all people. And then that name came up. And then she said, I hate that person. So what she told me was, I, I lie. I lied to you, Troy. That's what she told me. Because she could not love that one person. And I'm not judging her because you got to... People, I, you don't have to, you get to love everybody. Do you know that? You get to love people that hate you. You get to love people that were mean to you. I'm not saying be a doormat to those people or be abused by those people. I'm saying love those people because Jesus loved us when we are yet still sinners and enemies of him. That's what it says in scripture. Book of Romans chapter 13 verse 8 says, Owe no one anything except to love one another. Oh, one, no one, anything except to love one another. For he who loves one another has fulfilled the law. Verse 9, it says, For the commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, you shall not covet, and if there's any other commandment, and all summed up in this saying, namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. 
Now, verse 10 says, love does no harm to his neighbor. Therefore, love is a fulfillment of the law. And if you love people, you will not willingly break the commandments of God. Did you know that? If you love, you will walk and do what he says. That says in John, John chapter, I think it's 14 and 15. He even says, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. Now, you may break a commandment, but you're not going to do it willingly. But when he says, love one another, it is not an option. It is a commandment. Did you know that? Um, Nowhere in scripture do I read where he says, I want you to hate anybody. We would pick up on that really fast, wouldn't we? Well, we, we've got, we got to say, but God never says that to us. But we would pick up on that really fast if he said that. You know what? Jesus never hated anybody. He may hate sin, but he never hated the sinner. Did you see that in scripture? Now, um, in, in Luke chapter 10, 25 through 37, the parable of the Good Samaritan, which really goes on with this sermon title, From the Bottom Up. Now we know that a lawyer or attorney approaches Jesus and said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He says, keep all the commandments and, you know, like love the Lord your God with all your soul, a mind and strength, love your neighbors yourself. He said, I've done that. And he said, you're rightly, but he said, who is my neighbor? Now, do not ask Jesus and God a question unless you want an answer. Who is my neighbor? And, and Jesus tells him this story. Well, a man went down from um, Jerusalem to Jericho, fell among thieves, and, and they treated him horribly. They left him half dead. That's what it says in Scripture in Luke chapter 10. Now, in verse 31, it says, By chance a priest came by, but he noticed what happened and went by on the other side. Now, a priest represented God, and you would think that they would know everything, how to take care of people, but sometimes, even as Christians, we become too busy. Then it says here in verse 32, likewise, a Levite. Now, you read the Old Testament, Levites were supposed to help the priests and the priestly duties in the temple of God. Um, he would come up to where the man was on the road, he looked at him, and then he passed by on the other side. Now, Jesus gets right to the heart of the matter who the neighbor is. And he says, now a Samaritan came and he came to where the man was, saw him and had compassion on him. Now, this is a really hard story for Jesus to be telling, not for, not for Jesus, but for the people to hear. Because the only thing the Jews could agree with with the Samaritans is they hated each other. And Jesus knew that from him being a Jew. And they, they, they could just agree that they hated each other. And, and if you read things in the commentaries, both sides, the Jews and the Samaritans, had more use for a dog than they had for each other. That's pretty sad, but we kind of live in a world like that today too, don't we? We really do. And, and the Samaritan came to him, had compassion on him, came down, took care of him, bandaged him, took care of what he did, put him on his donkey, took him to an inn, and he stayed with him till he got over the point of death, and then he takes out money, gives to the innkeeper, and says, um, will you take care of him, and, and if, if you need any more money on my way back, which I'll come back, uh, I'll pay you, and kind of significant to the story when Jesus comes back a second time, and in verse 36, Jesus says, so um, which of these three do you think was a neighbor to him who fell among the thieves? Now, Pretty open question, but you could not get this question wrong. Did you know that? Who was a neighbor to the one that fell among thieves? And the attorney says, he who showed mercy on him, and all Jesus said was, go and do likewise. Go and do likewise. Now, now think about that. Go and do likewise. And people... It's not easy to love somebody in the flesh, Jesus. You know, if I asked you, who do you hate the most? There might be a name and a person come to your mind. And that's not scriptural. But that happens in our life, doesn't it? Who did you wrong? Who, missed, who, missed, who took your trust and, and took advantage of it? Who didn't pay you? I mean, the list goes on. Who left you? 
who lied about you. And people were never supposed to keep track of that because love covers a multitude of sins. Love believes all things, hopes all things, and bears all things. The greatest of these is love, chapter 13 of 1 Corinthians. Now, I say all that because in Luke chapter 6, starting in verse 27, Jesus again reminds us to love our enemies. But I say to you, he who hears, love your enemies and do good to those who hate you. Now, the world will never tell you that. Do good to those who hate you. I'll tell you what, people. Parents put up with a lot from teenagers, don't they? Anybody here been a parent of a teenager? <laughs> did, you, did you question your love with your kids once in a while? Uh, seriously. Or someone that um, lied to you? Someone that left you? But, but God says you get to love them. It's a commandment. It's a commandment. And it says in verse 28, bless those who curse you and pray for those who spitefully use you. The world will say, get rid of them. The world says, don't, don't do that. But God and Jesus say, you give them what they don't deserve. And verse 29, to him who strikes you on the one cheek, offer to him the other one. From who takes from your cloak, do not withhold your tunic either. If, if someone strikes you, let him, let him do it again on the other side. But, but our flesh will rise up and go, you hit me, I'm going to hit you. I'm going to knock you out. That's what our flesh does. And he says, if they take your cloak, offer, offer something else. And, and Jesus did those exact things leading up to the cross. You look at that all through scripture. And verse 30, and, and this is hard. Unless you love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, give to everyone who asks of you. Oh, my land, I'd be bankrupt if I did that. Give to everyone that asks of you. And from him who takes away your goods, do not ask them. And just as you want men to do to you, do also to them likewise. People, here's the thing. If we treat people awful, guess what's going to happen to us? It doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure that out. Wake up some morning and treat somebody bad all day. That's going to happen to you. What you sow is what you're going to reap. Verse 32, but if you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners do that. You ever thought about that? Sinners do that. Not that we classify them, but they're saved and unsaved, according to Scripture. And if you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same thing. And Jesus talks about true groups here, but he loves the two groups. Verse 34, and if you lend to those from whom you hope to receive back, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do that. Verse 35, but love your enemies to good to them, lending, hoping for nothing in return. People, we've all done that. We've given something and got nothing back. That's just part of serving God's kingdom. Did you know that? But that is the way it is. But it does not give us credit to do that to other people. The, the ask from them, and we say we're going to pay him back. That, that doesn't give us credit to do that. And it says, um, and your reward will be great, and you'll be sons of the Most High, for he is the king of the unthankful and of the evil. Verse 36, More, therefore be merciful, just as your father is merciful. Now, in 1 Peter 4 i I'm giving you a lot of scriptures because I'm going to back this up with scripture. And above all things, have Fervent love one for another. For love covers a multitude of sins. Love covers a multitude of sins. Think about that the next time you want to get angry. What you've done, Christ has atoned for. He's covered those sins. I mean, this is hard, isn't it? Because we all keep track of who hurts us. And if Jesus did that, I, I would probably be one of the top 50. I really would, probably would be, before I accepted him as Savior. People, I don't speak a lot about my past because I was a good sinner. I really was. But God saw through that and saved me. Because again, in 1 John chapter 3, verse 14, we know. Those two words speak volumes. 
We know. We know. It says that we have passed from death to life because we love the brother. We know. And here's the hard thing. We need to do it, not in our flesh, but in the spirit. What did Jesus say? The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. That's what he said to one of his own. He knows about us. And people, it's not easy to forgive. It's not. But then it says, he who does not love his brethren abides in death. Oh, people, don't, don't, don't live in death. Don't live in death. Don't pass that on to the people around you. Please don't do that. Um, I, I'm just going to share a little bit. Some of you have heard this before. Someone say, how do, you, how do you know about the love of Jesus, Troy? How, how do you know that? I didn't know that till last February. Yes, I, I was a preacher for a long time. Yes, I thought I loved everybody. Yes, I thought I, I forgave everybody. You know, here, here's a big question in our world today. We're almost done here in closing. How, what's it going to take for us to live in unity? That, that's a big question in the world. How are we going to stop fighting? How are we going to stop disagreeing? There's nothing wrong with disagreement, but it's how you disagree. It's how you do it. Do you do it in hatred? And, and people say this all the time. What is it going to take? I'll tell you what it's going to take. It's going to take the word of God and Jesus Christ in our heart. And that's the only way we can love in this world. Um, last February 21st, um, right after communion, um, I saw a vision. And someone say, how do you know it was a vision? Because I was in three different places. Um, I was down here kneeling. I was up here looking. I was over there setting by Max Lauer. And Jesus walked through where I was. And this is a short version. And, and, and I was on my knees, and that morning I wasn't very nice. And I asked for forgiveness of Jesus. And, and, she, uh, and, and you'll know who Jesus is. I'll guarantee this in the spirit. I was, I was looking down, and I saw Jesus walking, and I said, oh, that's Jesus walking. Like, I can name your name. That's how fast you'll know who Jesus is in the spirit. And, and he comes over, and he kneels down, wraps his arms around my head, and he puts his head on my head, and he smiles. And I felt so unworthy. And, and I'm going to fast forward the story. But from that day on for two weeks, 14 days, 14 days, all I could think about is the love of Jesus in my life, how he melted everything away from me. And from that experience on, I can, not that I hated anybody, but I cannot hate anybody. I can't. I can't, no matter what people did to me. For two weeks, that's all I thought about. I still think about that about every day of my life. And someone say, well, Troy, you gotta move on. I, I know I need to move on, but the love of God in your life will change everything. I mean, for two weeks, whatever was good in my life, I'd say, well, that's pretty good, but it's not like Jesus and his love. For two weeks, I said that. I mean, every, some of you are married, you love your spouse. It don't even come close to you loving your spouse, how much Jesus loves you. I hate to say that, but that's true. You love your kids, but it doesn't come to that close as how much Jesus loves you. You love, I shouldn't say you love your stuff. You like your things, but it's junk compared to how much Jesus loves you. It is. And Jesus said, you have passed from death to life. God says that, God and Jesus, Jesus, the word of God in closing. You have passed from death to life if you have love for the brother. People, I, I don't know your hearts today, but we live in a world that hates so easy and so fast. And I know that's not from God's kingdom. And if Jesus can love us in our sins, and even before we're saved, it says in scripture, when we were still yet enemies of him, he died on the cross for us because... He loved us. He loved us. And some things, when we get so upset with people, 
they don't even amount to anything compared to the love of Jesus. You mean, Troy, I'm supposed to let someone do me wrong? Up to a point, according to scripture, you are. You are. Because we did that to Jesus. Remember Jesus on the cross? They were hurling insults, making fun of him, saying, come off the cross. And he said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Don't you think he said that in love? And don't you think when those criminals, one hanging beside him on both sides, were making fun of him, say, hey, get us off of here if you're the Christ. And one said, hey, he, he, he's not up here because he's supposed to be. We're here because we deserve this. And Jesus looks at him after he says these words, Father, he said, remember me when you enter your kingdom. And Jesus said, not only will I remember you, but you'll go to the kingdom with me today. Forgiveness in pain on the cross with all of our sins. And if we're really truly Christians, people, we're, we don't have the sins in the world upon us. Can't we truly forgive one another how God has forgave us through Jesus Christ? I'm not here um, rebuking you. I'm here to encourage you. Because if you enter into the love of God through Jesus Christ, you will never be the same. Praise the Lord for that. And what that means from the bottom up is that that Samaritan who was on the bottom of society, according to the Jewish people, he came moved up to the top because he acted upon love and compassion. And maybe somebody's on the bottom of your list, but if they work in love in your life, guess what? They'll go from the bottom to the top. And maybe it's time for us to go from the top to the bottom because we need to love those people with all of our heart and with all of our soul. I ask you to stand to your feet today, and I ask you to search your heart. I encourage you people, the love of God will transform your lives. And, and, and if you need to accept Christ,